<clears throat> hey there, good morning everyone. So let me just check and make sure this is streaming to you guys. All new setup, new group. Oh, someone's messaging me. There's April messaging me. <laughs> so what, wondering, are you live? Yes, I am live right now. Um, so we are in the profitable mindset for women, for busy women. And you guys, I'm just so excited to have this group. Women are, we're, we think differently about topics than men do. And since um, most of my clients and most of my students are women, I want to be able to have a place like this where I can speak about issues that are um, specific and unique to women like this. Okay, and I'm not looking away. I'm just checking to make sure everything's working. Yes, you guys, we're here. We're here live. So I'm going to try to do these live videos workshops about once a week if I can make that happen. And they will be coordinate with the podcast episodes too. So I've been doing a business series this summer. Episode four will be out next week. Three will be out this week. Um, it's probably going to be eight or ten episodes. And it's all about starting and running a business because there are s the odds are stacked against you of failure is, is imminent for many, many people. 98% uh, of people who start businesses go out of business. With it. That's five years. 80% within the first couple years because most people don't realize how hard it is to start and run a business and then get it to profit. So then I get a lot of people who have been in business for five or 10 years and they say, oh, we've made it to the five year mark or 10 year mark, but they've never made money. They're pumping money into it from their day job. So I want you to increase your odds of success by, you know, I, that's why I share the podcast with you. It's why I have all the courses I do. So let me dive into what I'm going to talk about today, and that's failure. And of course, I'm just checking to make sure. Yeah, it looks like everything's working. Yay, yay, yay. So feel free to say hi below. Um, tell me what's going on with you with failure. The other thing is, I don't know if this will work, but I have a worksheet by chance. See if this worksheet works, you guys. I'm going to put it over here in the comments. Um, if it doesn't work, let me know if this works. If not, follow along. I've got a failure worksheet for you. I, I'm thinking that's not going to work, though. No, um, probably not. So we're, we're going to dive in. Here's what I hear from a lot of you about failure. First of all, yesterday, coming into the group, Shannon said she struggles with this huge fear of failure. Failing at my business. I'm reading my notes here now failing to take care of everyone, failing to get everything done that needs to be done around the house. I'm failing to be enough. I'm failing to do enough. So that's why I've got that statement right there is exactly why I have this group here for women because we are socialized to believe this about ourselves, but it's um, really holding us back from all our dreams. We're socialized to think that we have to do it all. We have to be a good mom, raise the kids, keep a halfway decently clean house, make meals for everyone. Oh, and let's have you contribute to the financial part of this family too. Let's have you stay home and run the business and homeschool the kids. We're socialized to do it all. And then we look around on social media and we think other women are doing it all, only they're better than us, which adds to the self-sabotage we just keep beating ourselves up and we wonder why we're getting sick. I, I have so many of my private clients that have autoimmune illnesses um, and the stress and anxiety and the self-sabotage we do to ourselves is contributing this. So I want to teach you about failure and in learning about failure, it's going to help you start to, um, f you know, battle against or the socialization, or even recognize that we have been taught something that's not true. We've, um, all of our teachers, our mothers, the women in our lives meant well when they passed on this um, socialization that as women, we should be able to do it all and do it all well, but they, they weren't correct. So once you learn that, once you start to believe that, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to be able to do it all, 
um, then you will start to see hope that you can learn a better way of doing it. That feeling that you have to do it all is holding so many of ba us back. So what I want to ask you about failure, and feel free, this is a live workshop, you guys, so I'm, I'm checking the comments here, but feel free to follow along in the comments and, and tell me what are your thoughts about failing, okay? Let me know what those are. What I want to tell you is most people, um, sorry, I'm just making sure that, yes, my PDF did not work. That's okay. I've got it for you here live. Most people have thoughts about failing that if they fail, it means they're not good enough. They have enmeshed the two. The two go hand in hand. Their worth, their sense of worth, their sense of value, their sense of how good they are is totally tied in to failure. April says it hurts to fail. Yeah, why does it hurt to fail, April? If, if you can type that in, I'll, I'll just do a little live coaching here. Why does it hurt you to fail? That's what she said. So I would love for you guys to notice just what are your thoughts about failing? Chances are, because I know there's always a, a little delay here on Facebook, but chances are you're making it mean you're not good enough. Did you know that's not true? Many people in their private session, their, their minds are blown. When I say that, no, just because you failed doesn't mean you're not good enough. We have been fed that <laughs> and socialized to think that. That's a belief we hold that's hurting us. Yeah, why is it painful, April? That's why I would ask you, why is it painful to fail? Hurts to fail, painful to fail. Why does it pain you when you fail at something? You're thinking something in your head when you fail that causes you pain. What are you thinking in your head that causes you pain? Okay, this is really technical, you guys, but this is mindset coaching. This is how you're going to get to success in your life. Yeah, comparison is immediately going to, um, <laughs> we are, it's e immediately going to make you feel bad. So that comparison trap, you know, we should only be comparing ourselves to ourselves. I love that um, we're having our county fair in a couple weeks unless our governor takes it away. And my daughter is really trying to get a, a blue ribbon in one event. She said, well, it depends on how the other kids do if I get the blue. And I said, no, the beauty of 4-H County Fair is you're only competing against yourself. You're not competing against the other kids. When, who, wh if your score is high enough, you will get a blue ribbon no matter how anyone else does. So think that in, in life. Okay, April says when she gets hurt, she's the victim. So... Again, ask yourself, why do I feel hurt when I fail? It's because you think somebody else is doing something to you, April. If you're the victim, you think outside forces are doing something to you. So again, we are slowing down during these workshops. We're slowing down what's going on in your brain because many of you aren't aware why you feel bad. Like April, she's painful. She's hurting. Why are you painful? What are you thinking in your mind? that is making you hurt and feel pain and feel like someone's doing something to you, okay? Notice that because that is the key to you starting to feel better. So notice what are your thoughts about failing. Many of us make it mean we aren't good enough. What I want to tell you, though, is this is actually a normal function of your brain. Did you know that? That our brain is the survival part of our brain. You've heard me talk about the two parts of our brain. The survival part of our brain is set up to show us to look for danger out there, like it's looking for bright, shiny, dangerous things, like red lights everywhere saying stop. And fear of failure is your primitive brain or your survival part of your brain trying to keep you alive by saying, wait, if you fail, you won't be accepted in society, you will be banished, you won't live. None of that is true, but that is your brain functioning normally. However, what you learn through mindset coaching is how to manage that part of your brain. Most of you have not learned to manage these thoughts. So you think when you fail or if you fear failing so you don't do something, it's a threat. Your survival part of your brain thinks it's a life-threatening situation. 
you aren't aware of that. You don't even know it. All you know is, why don't I do that hard thing? Oh, it's so hard, I'm not going to do it. It's because your brain thinks it's a survival issue. So that's why we're here, to learn how to um, take charge with the prefrontal cortex, the decision part of your brain that says, hey, we're not going to die. We're going to do this thing anyway. If you want to succeed in business, that is your only option, to learn how to manage a part of your brain that's saying failure is dangerous. Yeah, so um, April again becomes a victim because she's thinking about herself, I shouldn't have failed. I shouldn't have done it. That's self-sabotage. Whenever you tell yourself, I shouldn't be that way, I shouldn't have let that happen, I should have prevented that, you're sabotaging yourself, you're beating yourself up. That's your uh, survival part of your brain. Got to step in. This is it, April, where you pull yourself up by the chin and you say, hey, we're managing that part of our brain that's telling us we're not good enough. We should have done it differently. That's the survival part of your brain. Don't play with it. Don't play with those phrases. It, it gives you these ideas and these beliefs. You should have done that better. Don't jump in that pool with that belief because that is a belief coming from, again, the part of your brain that is not serving you to get ahead in business. When you are going to be a business owner, you've got to use the decision-making part of your brain and say, no, 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 there's no room for you should have done it this way. That's just self-sabotage. That is, and what I'm talking about here is the reason 98% of people do not ever get to business success. They go out of business because they aren't willing to take the leap and do the work here to use that prefrontal cortex to manage a part of their brain that is saying you should have done it differently. Okay. Isn't this cool? I love this stuff. All right. So your brain, there's the important thing for you to know is your brain is functioning normally when it tells you, oh my gosh, you should have done it better. You should have done it differently. You shouldn't have failed. That's your brain functioning normally. Now you got to step in and manage it with the other part of your brain. Okay. So it's, your brain's going to tell you like, oh, you should be more realistic. You shouldn't set such a big goal. And then you're going to have other people in your life telling you you should be more realistic. Do you really think you can do that? You've got to be able to, if you're going to be successful at business, shut all that off and manage it knowing that, yeah, I might fail. We're going to do this anyway. And it means nothing bad about me when I fail. Okay? So again, this is what's standing in the way of you either having business success or just reaching any sort of goal because you don't want to be uncomfortable. April wants to prevent the pain of failure. She doesn't want to hurt. She doesn't want to feel like a victim. Guess what? Your brain's going to tell you the easiest way to avoid that is don't do it. Don't do the big thing. You got to step in and say, wait a minute, we're going to do the big thing. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person because I failed, because I lost all this money, because I killed all the animals or the plants, or because nobody bought my stuff. Okay, so let me just make sure I'm following my notes. All right, there's two parts of, um, two types of failure I wanna talk to you about for a second. There are worthy fails, and then there are escape fails. I want you to make a ton of worthy fails every single day not escape fails. Escape fails are when you fail ahead of time to escape the discomfort or the pain. You got to be willing to feel the pain and tell yourself this pain is normal. A lot of people avoid the pain by never doing it. So that's what's holding you back. Or you sit down to say you need to send a sales email. You need to tell people to buy this new product you came up with. And every time you go to send the sales email, or you think you should be in your office writing it or at the computer, you go do something else. You go clean the barn. You go do the laundry. You go have a snack. You go on Facebook. You go on the internet. You think you should research more. You think you should ask more people. Those are escape fails. What I mean by escape fail is you're doing something that you think is important and needs to be done, but you're doing it in order to avoid the big thing that you risk failing at. You risk sending the email and nobody buys anything, okay? So I just want you to know the difference. 
that is an escape fail. Whenever you find yourself doing something except for the big goal or the big dream or the business things you need to do, you're doing something else, those are escape fails. You're failing ahead of time. I want you to do tons of worthy fails. I want you to go out and send the emails once a week telling you to buy and nobody buys. That is a worthy fail. You learned in the process what doesn't work, okay? Failure is feedback. So you learned by trying it, it didn't work, that you need to tweak it for next time or you need to get some more education or you need to dive back into module three and farm marketing from the heart or you need to get some mindset coaching. It's feedback that you've got to tweak something on your way to success. And you will get there when you keep making those worthy fails. Escape fails, hold us back. Okay, so those are the two different types of failure. And let me see. Okay, the other thing about failure is the more you fail, the more you will succeed. All right, I just wanna leave you to that before we jump into the worksheet. So let me just refresh over here, you guys, before I get back to my notes. Thank you all for being here live. And let's dive in to the worksheet. I'm guessing you can't download it because I didn't set it up right. That's okay. So the first one, what is your definition of failure? Um, it's really good. It, failure for me, failure is feedback. Failure is the path to success. That's my definition. Notice what's going on in your brain. Failure, most people make failure mean something, their definition is really bad. Like failure is to be avoided at all costs. Failure means I didn't do it right. Um, I think the opposite. Failure means you did do it right. You did take the risk on your way to your big goal and now you have information to do it differently. So the way you define failure is going to determine if you actually uh, do the things you need to do to stay in business. So. Look at what is your definition of failure, write it down, bring it to a coaching call if you want to, get some coaching in the comments here. Look at your definition of failure because that's gonna determine if you move ahead or not. And if your definition is holding you back, let me help you um, get a better definition, okay? That will propel you forward. Now, number two, I would love for if you can answer this in the comments too. What are common excuses that you use to avoid failing? What do you say to yourself or other people to avoid failing? All right. Like if you have to, um, you need new customers. Nobody's signing up for your email list and you know you need to go out and meet people. What are your c excuses you're using to not do that? COVID is a big one. <laughs> it's not an excuse. You could still connect with people. Um, I sign up people to my email list every day, even though we're shut down. I want you to be able to think that way too. So what, but in order for you to think that way, you've got to take a look at uh, and identify the excuses you're using to avoid failure. Why are you not doubling down on selling your products or marketing or getting mindset coaching? Why are you not doing that? Why are you not starting your business or why are you not expanding? Why are you not advertising in that one place? What is it you're telling yourself? Because that is everything. It's nothing outside of you that's holding you back from failure. It's all in how you think about it. Lana says she's too busy. Okay, that's a good one. I hear that a lot. Did you know because I've said this on the podcast, that is just something you're telling yourself. Like if you tell yourself you're too busy, that is so convenient and it's such a socially acceptable excuse too. But I really, um, I want everyone to take a look at that. That if you're too busy, so that's why you don't do things, start, maybe you can start looking at it differently. Like I haven't chosen to do that yet. If you're too busy to work out, it's because you haven't chosen to work out. You haven't made time to work out. I'm choosing not to work out is much better than telling yourself I'm too busy to work out because too busy to work out or too busy for Lana to do that thing she planned to do means you're helpless, you're a victim, you're too busy, you can't do it. It's a great excuse. So I just want you to be a, this whole exercise of what excuses are you using is to bring to the surface what you're telling yourself in your head 
And if you tell yourself you're too busy to write that sales email, you're too busy to expand your products, you're too busy to reach out to people who could get on your email list and become buyers, you're too busy to teach that workshop, you're too busy to figure out how to hook up your MailChimp to your website, you will never do it. So that's failing ahead of time. So just notice if you use the phrase too busy in your head, you are condoning failure. You're, con you're giving yourself a reason why you don't have to do it. So just practice a little bit switching, and switching that I'm too busy to I'm not choosing to send that sales email this week. I'm not choosing to reach out to people. Um, which means then you have choice in the matter versus a, I'm too busy, you're a victim. When you have choice to plan it, then it, you can easily move from I'm choosing not to schedule that email to I'm going to choose to make time in my schedule tomorrow morning to sit down and write the sales email at 10 a.m. But you can't get there from I'm too busy, okay? Isn't this crazy how our thoughts, the only thing stopping you from making lots of money in your business, whether that's tens of thousands of dollars for you or hundreds of thousands of dollars is how you're thinking about it. It's nothing outside of you. Most people don't believe me when I say that until they come to coaching and then they realize after six or 10 sessions that, oh yeah, it is everything in my head that's holding me, me back. Okay, number three, what failures could occur. This is what I want you to do. When you've set your big goal, what is your goal? Send a sales email, start your business, you know, just start the whole thing or just do one thing or create a website. How could you fail? Just notice what are the failures that could happen? So I want you to get them all out because when you address your failures ahead of time, then they can become little mini steps toward reaching your goal. So what are you afraid of will happen? You know, what is that thing you want to do and you're afraid of the failure? What are those failures? Nobody opens your email, write it down. I'm afraid people will complain, write it down. I'm afraid people will think I'm arrogant, write that down. Again, these are all things in your head. I'm afraid I will fail, write that down, <laughs> okay? I'm afraid my spouse won't support me. I'm afraid people will ridicule me. I'm afraid I'll lose money. Get all those things down on paper. Many times our failure, our fear of failure is about things we haven't actually thought through. When you get them down on paper, you will start to realize that maybe they're just a bunch of little things that are easily dealt with. Or maybe it is one big thing that now that you got it on paper, you can see two or three or five steps you can take to make that failure not even an issue anymore. Okay, so April said that, such a good one, her failure that she's afraid of is that people could know that I suck at grammar. Oh my gosh, why is that scary to you? What? So April, this is, just notice this. Why are you afraid of people thinking, oh, wow, she sucks at grammar? Why are you afraid of that? Just notice that. Notice what makes you afraid. So, um, because you can't just change the action and click send on the email until you get back to what is the thought driving that fear. What if people know you suck at grammar? What does that mean about you? What are you making that mean about you? Okay. Chances are most of us make our, f the reason we're not taking action is we make our failures mean something about us. There's no room for that in a successful business. Okay, so just notice, April, why are you afraid of people becoming aware that you suck at grammar, which, by the way, is just, uh, you know, it's in your mind. <laughs> There's... Uh, uh, you know, so anyway, that we'll, we can go um, do some coaching on that in the comments for sure. But when you tell yourself, I suck at grammar, that's self-sabotage. Oh, okay. And April thinks, well, if they see that I can't spell right, then they will think I can't milk a cow properly either. Look at how April made that mean something about her. She made it mean that she people will think she can't do her job because she misspelled a word. 
That is what we do. That's what our brains do. It's a normal function of her brain. It's not your brain acting up. It's your brain acting normally. But that is just feedback that you got to strengthen that prefrontal cortex. You got to make decisions better, stronger. You got to develop that muscle. You're living out of the survival part of your brain that says, ah, don't send the email. People know you misspell and then they will think you suck at your producing your products too. That's what we're doing. We're connecting those two in there, which makes failure so much more painful than if we just sent an email and someone said, oh, by the way, you spelled whatever wrong. So just notice that, that she's making it mean if she spells a word wrong, she sucks at milking cows. That's, that's the tricky part of our brain because we're socialized from little kids, toddlers, to think that way. But I'm telling you, it's untrue. Milking cows has nothing to do with misspelling, but she's connected the two, which keeps her from sending emails, which means um, you're going to struggle to get customers that will pay the price you need to charge. All right. So just know she has that concern. And here's what's illogical about the survival part of our brain. There are so many apps to correct your spelling, yet her brain, like all of our brains, won't give it up. It has convinced her that that's true. So I just want you to know that. And that's why number three is so important. Just like she did, get it out. What is your failure that you think might happen? That's what she thinks will happen. If they see I can't spell, they'll think I'm a bad farmer. Whoosh! Look how automatically her brain made that mean something bad about ourselves. We're all guilty of that. It's something I work on every day. And that's why I'm doing this workshop because I want you to work on it. I want you to realize you're telling yourself that and then you can work on it. And then I know April well enough to know uh, she's thinking right now like, oh yeah, of course spelling a word wrong doesn't mean I'm a bad farmer, but that's what my brain is making me do because she's got to strengthen that muscle of learning how to manage it, which is what we're doing right here. Now, okay, number four is what is your failure plan? So April, since you're participating right there, what's your plan for that failure of sending out your marketing material with bad grammar, poor grammar, misspellings? What's your failure plan? I want you to plan for it and, and know that it still could happen. It means nothing about you, but how are you going to plan ahead to make sure it's written as well as you possibly can, as good as you, as you know. Now you got me worried about my own grammar here. The grammar police <laughs> are here. Okay, speaking of the grammar police in this situation, you're always going to have someone on your email list who's the grammar police. Don't worry about it. They, um, they, you know, they may or may not buy your milk. It doesn't matter. If someone wants to step into the role of grammar police because it makes them feel better in their day to be critical, that's not about you, that's about them. But what is your failure plan? Okay, April has her sister edit for me. Use Grammarly, you guys. Grammarly, I use the paid version, there's a free version. The paid version is so worth it. I don't even know what it costs, but Grammarly edits all of my, everything I write from email to Google Docs to this worksheet. Um, anything I write, Grammarly takes care of it. So. You can easily find an editor. I have an assistant who also checks my work, So, and, and I check her work. Okay, Sherry, I'm so glad you're here. I know you just joined, and i um, really glad you guys are tuning in. Okay, so that is April's failure plan. What is your failure plan? Are you afraid to raise Thanksgiving turkeys because you won't get them to the right weight? What's your failure plan? Your failure plan is you got to do it anyway. Guess what? you're not gonna get them to the right weight the first time. <laughs> I get so many emails from people. The first time you do Thanksgiving turkeys, you're gonna suck. You're gonna get 35 pound turkeys that nobody wants, or you're gonna get eight pound turkeys that nobody wants. I, I hear this every year from so many of you. So your failure plan is you gotta raise a few batches of turkeys before you get really good at getting the weight spot on <laughs> at Thanksgiving time or whenever your butcher date is. So number four is what is your failure plan for each of those failures that could occur in number three? Okay, let me check. Oh, so many comments and, you know, Facebook doesn't always show me. But let me see how we're doing here. Okay, good. And there, <laughs> so get the grammar police to do it for her. 
Now, the last question on this workshop, I want these to be about 30 minutes. We're almost there. Okay, April, this is for you or anyone else watching, but I just heard because she's participating there in the comments. What Number five is what is a believable thought that you can practice to feel courage on purpose? So April, using your example, how can you feel courage to send out the email? What would you be telling yourself in your head? I want you to come up with this. What can you tell yourself in ahead of time inside your head that will give you the courage to click send on the email or the marketing material knowing you might have mistakes in it? What can you tell yourself? Let's come up with, I will end this live video helping April come up with a thought that will get her to be able to do it. Okay, I'm thinking a thought for April would be something like, I'll see if she can come up with it first. There's always a delay here, so waiting for her to come up with that. But a good thought would be, I will send this email anyway. I am sending this email because I have products that help my customers. I have a product that people need to get their hands on. And if I misspell a word, doesn't matter. I'm helping my customers by sending this email, even if there are mistakes in it. My obligation is to serve my customers, whether I misspell my words or not. Okay, April says failure is feedback. If I fail, if, if I send this email and I have five mistakes and someone points them out, that's just um, feedback that my grammar police weren't on duty. That's a good thing to tell your, you know, so you always have that one customer who sends you the email and says, did you know you your grammar was wrong? You just write them back and say, oh, the grammar police had the day off. You know, you just make it funny, okay? Anyway, this was, um, this whole episode here is gonna help you guys start to take bigger risks. When you uh, mediate failure ahead of time, which means, you aren't scared to fail because you know what your failure plan is and you have thoughts in your head that you're telling yourself actively so that you go take action, even though you know you might fail, then you will reach bigger and bigger goals. Because here's what I do know, and I ta talked a lot about this in podcast episode number 37. The only way for you to get to success is to fail huge and fail a lot. You got to fail big. You got to fail often. That's what I want you to do. I want you to leave this uh, video today and I want you to plan what big failures are you going to plan, okay? And I can tell you, the, the bigger you get, the more customers you get, the more followers you get, the bigger your fails are. This work here is going to help you be prepared for that because you're going to have the failures. Let's not, let's learn. This work here is going to learn you to make it not mean something about you. You're not a failure just because someone corrected your grammar or pointed it out or called you a name. You're not a failure because you raised turkeys and they're all 35 pounds and nobody wants them <laughs> or they roll their eyes at you or they don't want to pay your price. You're not a failure because of that. The only way you're going to start believing that is to get out there and make fails and realize you can handle how crappy it feels to fail. And also know there's nothing wrong with your brain when you fail. Um, when it tells you there's something wrong with you, your brain is functioning normally. You just got to strengthen the prefrontal cortex, which all my work is about teaching you how to do that. Okay, you guys, so this workshop was really fun. I'm going to try to do these um, once a week to correlate with the podcast. I'm doing a whole business series this, no this summer. It started with episode 37. Episode 39 is coming out this week on the 10, uh, the 10 year plan for your business, creating a 10 year plan. Uh, but go fail big and then tell me in the comments how you failed and how you got through it, okay? Because that's what it's about. You got to know how to get through failure. All right, you guys, take care. Thank you for being here. And April, thanks for being here and being our little um, coaching example um, on online and anyone else who's watching you feel free to put it in the comments and I will come back and help you with that all right take care everyone